Hello everybody, welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. Today we are looking at a little lantern. So here's my panel. I'm going to be cutting this out. Um, we've got a few little birch trees on this panel. Um, so I'm going to show you how we cut those out on the scroll saw and we're going to bring them together with another few panels that I've already prepared. Um, so we're just going to go through the paces um, and, and show you how we're going to make a lovely little, lovely little project at the end of this. A really nice thing to do. Um, this is a, a, like a pierced project. So we're, we're going to drill some holes through this and then we're going to thread the blade through our piece of timber and then just going to start cutting from there. So we'll be left with all of these as voids, these little trees. Um, and then when we shine a light through that, it's going to spill out across the table or, you know, up against the shelf. So first job for that one, um, we're going to take it over to the bench and I'm just going to drill a few holes, one in each of these little tree shapes here. So just as easy as that, I'm going for quite a small um, drill bit. And the way that I've stuck this on um, was with the copy dex glue. And what that can do is pick up on the drill bit and um, and wrap itself around. So what I tend to do is use a little brattle, but you could use a nail or whatever you've got that's sharp and just puncture through that little gluey layer and, um, and then put your drill in that little location. So we drilled some holes through. Let's get my little template back up there. Um, so hopefully we can see on this one, we've got holes right the way through. Um, and that's what we're going to put the blade through when we come over to the, to the scroll saw. Okay. So in here, I've got a, a number five modified geometry. Okay. And we're going to have a look at a couple of different blades. Um, but this is where we're going to start. So let's bring that, um, that little cam lever forward and just undo this one. Um, great thing about this trade uh, machine is that that whole arm lifts up out the way, uh, making jobs like this um, a, a really easy. Um, so we can drop that arm back down, locate straight into the, um, the blade clamp there. Just make sure we've got that right before we get going and then quick tension with that um that little arm on top there and a little cam lever and we can start cutting our design so let's turn the machine on i'm going to use extraction today um because this is a piece of you and it can be a bit of an irritant um especially i um i react to certain timbers, you and cedar um, quite often uh, bring out a little reaction in me. So I'm going to use extraction. That's going to pull all the dust out of the bottom of the machine. Hopefully you can still hear me. Just let us know in the comments um, if you can't. And just taking it down into that corner. And I'm going to do another one from the side to meet up with it so I can rest my blade on that side. Resting the back of the project to so where I've drilled that hole on the back of the blade here, that doesn't cut anything. So I can rest on there and bring my blade to where I want it. And we're just gonna go around our template. Nice quick change in direction. Let's Bring that flower in, get that engaged so we can see our cut line. And although this has got a break in it here, I'm just going to cut right past that. You could drill holes in each of these segments and just do them as we go. But like I say, I'm just going to cut straight past that and cut this tree out as one. And we'll make each of those little cutouts um, part of the design. So this number five modified geometry is doing its thing. A really nice clean cut. A 
So pivoting on that blade and you can see I'm having to make lots of quick changes in direction. I'm going to backtrack up that cut and just start another one here. come up and meet that cut there. So resting on the blade again, whoops, let's get that little corner out, and then backtracking up my cut, and starting off this way. So you can work like this, changing direction constantly, to get each of these little pieces out. Oh, overshot it there. But that's fine. You've got a nice organic shape that we're cutting. So once this piece of paper comes off, no one's the wiser. And what I'm going to do is come back down this tree line here. Let's keep that in as a detail so I'm switching almost 90 degrees and across and then down into that line I've already cut. Cut the back end of these off and now I'm just going to roughly take out this material and then we've got a bit of space for the blade to turn on the inside face. Again, just roughly cut, I'm going to cut to the back of those little details. And just remove this blade. And take your time with this. I've got quite a lot of cut, so I'm quite a lot too cut, I should say. Um, so I'm moving through it a little bit. And then I'm going to backtrack along there, right the way back to my little drill hole, rest in the blade in that corner, and then just come up to meet that. Let's just turn the saw off a moment and the extraction and I'm just going to pick out some of these bits. This is going to give me a lot more room to, um, to spin the blade around. I'm just going to use the saw itself to see if we can flick that one out. It's good. And then we can pop those to one side. Okay, so with us today, we've got Craig on our questions, and Jason's working the cameras, and we've got a question just come in. Yes, we got uh, first a comment from Woodwork Learner, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, what did you say, Ben? Uh, no, he's only kidding. Oh, really? About the extraction. <laughs> no, I think everybody can hear you loud and clear. Oh, um, but he also did ask, uh, would a spiral blade be easier for this project? Oh, absolutely. So that's what we're getting to. Um, well spotted woodwork learner we're going to um, we're going to have a little play around with this one um, if, if you go to the see the you know the people who do this piercing they'll use a blade like this they'll use that um, you know modified geometry blade because it saves on the cleanup afterwards um, but yeah that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to swap to a, a spiral blade and that's going to allow us to cut in every direction really nice and easy to use so we're, we're going to swap that one out in just a moment and uh, Maria in Wales has commented, she hates spiral blades. They never do what you expect. <laughs> okay. So uh, there we go. That's uh, straight away. We've got a contrast in opinions. And that's what I love about this, you know, woodwork. Everyone's got their own, um, you know, their own way of doing things. And, you know, you can master a blade like this and, and really, you know, take your time. When we're doing it as a demonstration, we have to quite, you know, quite quickly push these through to get it in and fit it in an hour. We never rush. 
Um, but, you know, we, we're working at a pace. Um, but, yeah, we're going to have a look at spiral blades and, and how they behave, how they perform. Um, and, you know, have a go. Have a go and, and try the two different types. Um, I really like the spiral blades, um, especially for absolute beginners. They're, they're really nice and easy, user-friendly. Um, and the kids as well, if you've got something like this and they can make it themselves, um, you know, obviously we need to worry about, um, you know, consider the PPE, make sure they've got their goggles and stuff like that on. But this is a lovely little project for kids and they love making things themselves. Um, scroll saw is one that's really nice and safe to use. Um, so, you know, really suited for, um, for getting the youngsters involved. So let's get back to cutting. I'm going to put this on. Now I've got a bit of space to swing around in. We can, um, we can cut this nice and easy. So again, we can rest these projects on the back of the blade and that's not going to harm our piece of timber. And we can make these little sideways cuts in like that. And I'm just going to go along and do all those cuts there. And then we can come back and pickle them out. What we'll get from this type of blade is a really nice kind of sharp square edge. Um, whereas the spiral one, it kind of rounds things off a little bit. But that's fine again. You know, I don't mind, especially with these trees and stuff, I don't mind... Um, you know, a little bit of roundness. So I'm just catching on something that's fallen down in the extraction plate there. It's almost working like a little pin. It's holding me in position. I'm just going to see if I can use the blade to ping that out. And there it goes. Just take it nice and slow. I'm rushing here and I'm missing a couple of these lines. So coming up to our cut here. But because I've cut that bit of waste out, I've got this luxury of being able to um, position the blade and swing the project round before it starts cutting. So again, oh, that one's already cut out. Let's see if I can ping that out with the blade. No. So we'll just remove that one. And like I say, it is a preference, but if you see people who are really into this kind of pierce work, they they do not like the spiral blades. Okay. So we've cut our little tree out. It's not exactly perfect, but that doesn't matter. Like I say, we've got a nice organic shape here. It doesn't matter if we come off our lines a little bit here and there. So that's the modified geometry blade, and that will give you a really nice clean finish underneath. Okay, so we've got a lovely crisp edge. There's no cleanup to um, you know concern yourself with. Um, but it is a little bit awkward. There's lots of changes in direction, but you know, that's kind of what we're doing with the scroll saw. A little bit of patience and a little bit of practice and those cuts will come out really nice. So I'm fitting my um, spiral blade. Let's pop that on there. So this is like a blade, it's just been twisted along the length um, and I'm just feeling which direction the teeth are flowing. So if it grips when you're pulling a certain way, that's your teeth facing down, and that's the way the blade wants to go into the clamp here. So let's pop that in, pushing it right the way back. Let's bring our arm down, but let's, before we do that, just thread through one of these holes. 
So it's going through the project, through those holes that we drilled earlier. Now, I'm just going to bring that down off the, um, off the tensioner on the back, and then we can get that gripped in that top clamp. Quick tension, and I usually just bring that up a little touch more on the tensioning knob on the back. Okay. So extractor back on, and you'll see the difference. I don't have to turn the workpiece anymore. I can cut sideways. Drag it towards myself. But the important thing with these is not to put too much pressure on. We don't want to, um, you know, snap the blade. So that feels a little bit awkward, dragging it towards myself. So I'm just going to twist it to the side. You don't really have to rotate the workpiece. I quite like cutting by pushing the uh, material away from me. These can be a little bit unpredictable, like you say, Maria. They can kind of change direction. Um, if they feel a tough bit of grain, they can sometimes go around. But with the tension up and not too much of a force or not too much of a hard feed rate, you can be really precise with these things. Gentle pressure down on the table. I can feel that extractor as well pulling the piece on the table, it's like a little suction. An extraction on these machines, um, we've got the uh, little craft extractor there, um, which provides quite a, a pull. Um, and what that was doing is whistling through all the holes on the table, and it was it was too much suction. So all I've done is where the extraction port is is to drill three holes in that, and that's allowed a little bit more air into the um, into the extractor, and it stopped that whistling through the table, which is really high pitch. If you're sat here for any period of time, I would definitely recommend some hearing protection. Because that high pitch of the extractor, you know, that's the sort of noise that's gonna, gonna slowly irritate you and affect your hearing. So, again, just slowly coming around these cuts. And I'm going to try and take that roundness off that's so produced by the drill bit so it doesn't look like it's been drilled, but it's been cut all the way around. So I'm just running the blade into that little corner. Okay. That's arm comes up. Again, a lovely little feature on this scroll saw. And we're on to the next one. Some people prefer to um, keep the top clamp engaged and, um, and just dip the blade through the hole and, and fix it on the bottom. I like to um, lift the arm up. I can see what I'm doing a bit more with the top clamp. 
and that's just the way I like to work. But like I say, lots of different ways you can approach this. And everyone's got their own kind of work method. So you can see this time, I'm not twisting the work teeth at all. I'm just using those teeth all the way around that blade. And just cutting in any direction. Get a little bit more control. So when I'm coming up to something like this, I'll, I'll lessen the feed and allow the blade to kind of correct itself. When you're putting pressure on in a cut, the actual blade flexes. And then as you're... Um, you know, as you slow down, it's going to try and right itself and it will carry on moving. And then that's when you start overshooting things and losing a little bit of control. So a gentle pressure. And as you're nearing your um, detail or um, changing direction, just loosen off that speed. And that will save you... Um, you know, save it from overshooting or stuff like that. And again, I've chosen this because it is a nice kind of rough organic shape. There's not too many kind of clean lines and stuff on these trees. They're knobbly and they've got bits kind of missing and So a really nice beginner's project. Just get used to how the saw behaves. And you can make this out of any wood. This is about 10 mil thick. Um, if I was to do it again, I'd probably go a little bit thinner than that. I'll probably do my next one at 8mm, um, but I've done one that's really thin, um, and it's a bit of a pain to keep together. So if you're doing something really thin, just use a bit of ply, something like that, and um, then you've got that cross-laminated strength in your piece of timber. So just a couple more to do, and then we'll have a look at putting this together. Um, let's have a look at the bottom of this quickly. Not, not that obvious to see on camera, but this is the one we did with our modified geometry blade. So those really crisp edges. And actually on these ones we've used the, um, the spiral blade for, they're a little bit fluffy on the back here, but we can address that in a moment. So cutting off that round bit where we drilled to disguise that a bit. Again, every now and then you'll get a little bit of timber that falls down in the extraction. And it acts like a little pin. You can't move your work sheet. Sometimes you'll have to stop the machine and go fishing for it. Uh, but quite often you can flick it back out with a blade. That blade's feeling a little bit tired on that back face, so I'm just going to rotate my work piece around and use the front facing teeth. And that's cutting a lot freer now, and a lot quicker with less pressure. You can whiz through this. So 
suit, like I say, I would normally have hearing protection on for this little job. All my headphones in, I'd be listening to some music and just get kind of get into the subject and just enjoy the time cutting. I can't smell any of this stuff. That extractor's doing a great job of um, pulling the dust through the bottom of the cup. So then I can come across here. And just doing these little bits up. So that doesn't want to come out. So let's stop our extractor and um, and pick this piece out. So undo the blade clamp, lift the arm, and then we can come off of that blade. Okay, so we've got another question. Yeah, can you just confirm what wood it is you're using there, Ben? So this is a piece of yew. It has this kind of lovely uh, warm orange colour. Um, it's going to look really nice once we get the lights shining in there. Um, it is a lovely piece of timber, um, but it does react with me. So that's why I've got my extractor. When I'm finished here, I'm going to make sure I wash my hands. I'm not going to touch my face. All of those sorts of things you need to consider when using a timber like this. Have you got a favorite wood you use on your scroll saw? Um, I, I like sycamore. I like sycamore for everything, really. Quite often, um, these um, projects cross over. So say we're doing trees here. If we were doing the reverse, we were cutting out the voids in between the trees, we could add little knots and um, some little um, bits and bobs. So I like ones that are going to um, work with my pyrography as well. Um, so quite often, it will be, be sycamore, something like that. Um, try and stare away from um, anything that's too resinous and oily. I, I won't use cedar anymore, so, um, but that is a personal thing because I react to it. Um, but yeah, sycamore, lime, all that sort of stuff. And what blade was that you were using again? This is, um, it's in the links at the bottom. This is a, a number four uh, spiral blade. These are made by Pegas. Okay. Oh, I've got this upside down. I was too busy chatting then. <laughs> so let's flip that back over and get to what we can actually see. So let's say about 10 mil thick, this one. And that's something I've considered when we've taken out these little notches. Okay. They're about 10 mil in. Um, that's going to vary on, you know, whichever kind of thickness you're working on. And you'll see the way they kind of interlock with the other panels in a minute. But keeping that the same um, you know, keeping this little notch here the same depth as the thickness of the wood means when we put the other sides on, they're going to they're going to sit up nice and flush um, to our um, to our other pieces. So extractor back on. <laughs> And let's switch it around so I'm not using the back of the blade. Remember that felt a little bit dull. These blades do have a, um, you know, they do wear. You should get a good kind of at least half an hour's cutting time. Half an hour to, you know, depending on the thickness and the, you know, if the wood is any silicates and things like that on. Um, so they they do blunt, but they are not very expensive. They're um, they're almost a consumable. So with this kind of fluff coming out the back, so where this spiral cut, perhaps not clean cutting, 
sometimes that will get caught on the um, extraction underneath. So we've got a perforated um, table here, which is allowing all that dust through. Sometimes those fluffy bits will just snag on it. So every now and then I'm just very lightly lifting the project and that's allowing that um, kind of fluff over whatever it's getting stuck on. It's just subtle pressure side to side. Again, I'm just going to swivel that round. Now there's no resting on the back of the blade with this blade. It cuts on all faces. So I was just being a bit careful as to where it was going in. So we just got stuck there, lifted the project ever so slightly. And that allows us to carry on with this cut. Good. So that's the panel cut. Um, we've turned the, the noisy bits off now so we can talk nice and freely. Let's retrieve our um, project and just pushing out these little bits here. Sometimes you'll get a bit of um, dust. So I'll give that a tap. Oh, we've got to cut out our little notches here. So we've got another question. Yeah, quick question from uh, Jim. Is the spiral blade just cutting on the downstroke or both up and down? Just on the downstroke. So these teeth are all facing downwards. Um, so it's like a regular blade, but twisted all the way down through. All the teeth are facing down. Um, the modified geometry one that I used first, that number five modified geometry, my kind of go-to blade, um, that has an upwards facing tooth. Um, and that's why we got that nice clean, um, clean finish on the bottom. Okay. So I'm just going to cut these little notches and then we'll crack on. Okay, so another question. Yeah, got a question from Maria. Um, what method do you use to uh, to make sure that the blade is at a right angle to the table? Okay, so um, I've got a, a square here. I'll just grab it. It's just off screen. Oh, good man. Craig's got one there. Thank you. So we've got on this one, we can just drop that onto the table. And I'm looking down that line there. Okay, and I'm making sure that the blade is in line with that square because it's important that it is square to the table. Okay, that's giving us our um, side to side. If we needed to adjust that, that's done just under the table. We have, um, let's go on to camera one there, Jason. Lovely. So under the table here, we've got um, a little rack and pinion. We can undo that lever and then dip that side to side. Actually, I've only got those bits to cut, so it doesn't matter if I throw it out. So you can see the tilt on the machine there, okay? And again, we would just use that square, and I'm eyeballing it down the blade. Um, it has got a zero underneath, and the red pin is exactly on the zero when that is um, that square. So that's, that's really good. So we can lock that off. That gives us our side to side. And on this machine as well, on the motor, you can actually undo some little um, bolts on the back. And if you twist the motor, that will bring this arm forwards and backwards as well. So we can switch positions. We can come to the side here, um, check it's nice and square. Actually, on this one, it's dipping forward ever so slightly. So it could either be in your clamp holders up on, on here. You've got at least five mil. Um, adjustment back and forth just in the clamps. Um, but if it's anything more than that, it's going to have to be adjusted in the motor. Okay. Um, but you could have a square piece of wood and put that right up against it, perhaps lose this hold down clamp to set the blade. Um, all those sorts of things are going to help you get square. Okay. Yeah, Ben, uh, a question from Bill. Will the skip tooth blades do as good a job? Can't get on with the spiral blades. They seem to have a mind of their own. <laughs> okay. Um, so, like I say, the, um, 
it will cut in all different directions. Um, and there's no rest in the blade on those ones. The skip tooth, um, that's only going to give you bigger spacings between the teeth. I would recommend quite strongly those, um, those modified geometry ones. They've got the best of all the things. They're kind of skip tooth, so they've got really good waist clearance. Um, so you can use thicker material. Um, they, they've got that upwards facing tooth. There, there's the, they're a shaped tooth as well, so they have a little grind on them, even though they're tiny millimeter sized tooth, they're actually shaped. Um, if you've not had one had a go with those before, uh, they're the ones I would definitely recommend. Skip tooth really for thicker materials or, or like we were talking about before, that kind of resinous um, pines and cedars, those sorts of things. Um, and they'll give you a better waist clearance and a, and a, and a faster cut because because it can just take that way straight out the bottom. Um, like I say, I, I only, <laughs> there's only about three or four blades I use, and, and two of those are modified geometry. You've got number five and the number three uh, for puzzle pieces. Um, and then these spiral ones for these sorts of uh, projects where you've got lots of changes of direction. There's a little bit fiddly. Um, and they're really nice for the kids to use as well, like I said before. So just popping the extraction on for these little cuts, and then we'll look at um, putting this together. I actually cheated here. I cut these on the bandsaw, those little slits, because I wanted to um, make sure they were correctly sized before um, putting this together. I don't want any surprises. But you can see we've got a little bit of a wonky, wonky line there. That's kind of one of the drawbacks of this type of blade. But they've all got their own pros and cons. For me, that's kind of speed of being able to do that. Um, you know, that really kind of sells that blade to me, that spiral blade, for, for this type of job. Um, so we've got a paper on here. We've got the copy decks. Um, should come off nice and easily if you just roll that off. Okay, so another question. Yeah, got a question from Maria. Any tips on cutting long straight lines and also perfect circles? So long straight lines is fairly, well, I say it's fairly easy. You can get um, wider blades. You get the kind of hook tooth blades, all right? They have, uh, as the name implies, quite a large hooked tooth. Now, even if you've got a fence on this and you are running your piece of timber, um, these blades have got too much flex on them, really, to cut straight lines. Um, I would I would go with either a handsaw or, or the bandsaw. Um, not really um, designed to cut straight lines, these scroll saws, but if you um, if you wanted to cut a, a, a straight line, check out the hook tooth ones. Um, they're they're pretty good. Um, perfect circle. Oh, it's practice, really. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, perfect circle is is something that's been trying to you know the artists and stuff have been trying to attain for years. Um, so it is a tricky little thing. Um, it depends whether it's um, you know you're cutting like a wheel or you're cutting an internal circle. Um, you would either drill inside or just outside of that. And then what I tend to do is just creep up to your, you know, whether you've got a line or a score mark or whatever it is your, um, you've got your circle marked out on, creep up to it a few times and get the width of the blade up against that line and then rotate the workpiece so it's sitting on the side of the blade and then start your cut from there. And then you should get a nice, um, a nice start to the cut. But yeah, practice and um, and getting your pivot point right. So it's kind of feeding around. Quite often, you'll see on these scroll saws, these um, these get circles and circles all scratched in the table just from projects whizzing around and around. Um, but yeah, perfect circle. I, I'm not too sure. Let, let us know if you <laughs> if you uh, if you master the perfect circle. So we've got our little panel there. Okay. Um, we have got uh, all cut out. 
we've got our nice little trees. You can see the light through it. You can see the scroll saw in behind there. Um, and like I say, we've cut these little notches and they are going to help us when we, we come to put this together. So over on the bench here, I've got three more panels and they are slightly different. Um, we've got two designs. Let me just pick this one off. We've got two slightly different um, kind of tree scapes, I guess we'll call them, or woods, woods, wood, wood, uh, lots of different trees. Um, and that's important because when you look at it from the corner, um, it's going to look a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit natural. If you can see the same image on both faces, um, they don't quite look as, as sweet. So quite roughly putting this together, we've got big, um, these big kind of teeth and the big gaps that they slot into. A little bit of fiddly. Um, but there's lots you could do to that now. You could, you could glue that up, put some little pins through here. Um, you could drill from the top and put a little dowel through. So it's almost like a, a you know, like a page that will open. Um, and if you look at the one behind there, I've kind of laid it out as a Constantina. Okay. Um, so I think let's shed a little bit of light on these, um, on our lanterns. Are we all right for questions, Craig? Are we good for a minute? Good. So I think if we turn these lights on, I've got some fairy lights going on there. Let's get these going on in here. Let's just take that panel off, actually. And I'm going to turn these on at the same time so they have the same pattern. On and on. Oops, sorry, I'm stood in the way there. Get too carried away with it. And you can start to see that kind of glowing through the trees. Um, yeah, good. So let's have um, some lights down. You could pick different color lights. Um, the red ones are quite like, they're quite kind of autumnal. Um, but you can see you know, that, that light spilling through is going to really kind of cast shadows on, on here um, and up against the wall. If you've got something behind, you can see the kind of shadows that it will, it will throw across the room. Uh, look really nice on a, on, a, um, on a shelf or something like that. Okay. So that's our little scroll saw lantern. Really simple and easy project to do. Um, have a go. Have a play with your um, your spiral blades, um, and um, yeah, keep it simple. Um, don't worry too much. Don't strive for too much for perfection. They're natural things. That's why I love doing these sort of leaves and trees and things like that because everyone's different. No one's going to look at that and say, "Oh, that branch is a bit out of place" or something like that. Okay. So, any more any more questions? Are we good? Just one more question. Yep. I'm not sure whether we'd be able to answer it quite. What's that light and where did we get it? I'm not sure. These we've stolen off our photography department. And they're really nice kind of high-end lights, those ones. But these ones behind, I can give you some advice on these. This is just a little string of lanterns um, got from Ikea. Um, cheap as chips. Um, really nice. They've got those um, different colored um lanterns i guess on them um and and you get different colors in the box as well so you can swap these off um and if you're looking for that kind of red and orange or autumnal ones you get all the red ones on here if you want greens and silvers in the you know if so you you might want to put some leaves at the top or something you can you can arrange them so those lights are really you know really representing the colors of the trees but yeah ikea for the little um twinkly lights those, um, those other ones we've, we've taken from our photography department, they're really nice. They're called Aperture, um, like professional grade um, lights. They're probably a little bit dear. <laughs> okay. Uh, so thanks for joining us. Um, come back tomorrow. Craig's got a lovely little box he's going to make for you. Don't miss that one. Um, we'll see you again soon.